Alright then gang, so we've seen a lot of basic data types in PHP so far. We've seen integers, floats, strings, arrays, etc. But what if we wanted to create our own custom data type or object with certain properties and functions that we can use with that object? For example, we could have a user data type which would represent a user on our website perhaps. And that user would then have access to certain properties, an email, a username, a gender maybe, and it would also have access to several functions specific to that data type, like a login function or a logout function. So how would we create such a data type, our own type of data? Well, first of all, we create what's known as a class, and a class is like a blueprint for an object a blueprint for a data type. It describes what properties and what functions an object of that type will have. And then what we could do is create an object based on that class, based on that blueprint. And this is called instantiating a class. So let's do this. Let's first of all create a class. And we do that by using the class keyword. Then we give the class a name. I'm gonna call this user and we open up our braces. Now. Class names typically start with a capital letter right there. Now inside the class, we need to define what properties and what functions these user types are gonna have. Now, we're gonna have an email property and also a name property. So how do we define those? Well, we don't just say email is equal to something and name is equal to something. First of all, we have to say, what type of property is this? Is this a public one or is this a private property? Now, public means we can access the property and change them from anywhere outside the class in our code. And private means we can only access them from inside the class itself. Now, typically what we should do with our properties is set them to private so that our objects are a little more protected. Then if we want to change the value of one of our properties on the object, we use a class function to do that. Now that might have gone whew, over your head for now. So what we're gonna do to begin with is set these to public and then we'll talk about setting them to private later on and seeing how that works. So public, remember, means we can access these different things, these different properties outside of the class. So we'll create a public property, first of all, called email. And we're not gonna set it equal to a value yet. We'll just create that property on this class. And we'll also create one called name. So right now, this class has an email property and a name property. Now, we also want to create a function, and this function is also going to be public. And we'll call this function login, because users can log in. And inside this function, what we'll do is just echo the user logged in. So something simple, right? So we have this class now, which describes a kind of type of object. Now what we'd like to do is create a new object based on this class. So how do we do that? Well, the way we do it is by first of all creating a variable to store this object in and we'll call it user1 and set that equal to a new user. This is called instantiating a class. We're creating a new object and we're storing it inside this variable and that object is gonna be based on the user class. So we use the new keyword, first of all, then the class name, and we invoke that, and it creates a new object. Now, this user one is gonna have an email property, a name property, they won't have values, but they'll have those properties, and also it's gonna have access to a login function. So then how do we access those different properties and those different functions? Well, the way we do it, we'll start with the function, is by saying user, one, which is the variable we stored it in, then an arrow, which is a dash or a hyphen and a carrot like that. Then we say whatever function or property we want to use. And we're gonna use the login function. And we have to invoke it using the parentheses, much like we would any other function. So that is gonna then fire this function. Because remember, when we instantiate a class, we're creating a new object based on that blueprint on that class, and now that object has these properties and this function. So we're accessing that function from that new object. Hope that makes sense, and we should see this echoed to the browser. So if I save this now, and preview over here, then we see the user logged in, awesome. 
Now, if we try to echo the name of the email, this won't work. I'll show you that. I'm going to say user one arrow and we want the name. Now, we don't have to use dollar sign right here. We just say whatever the variable is called. So name or email. All right. So it knows we're trying to access this or this. OK, so if we try now to echo this. And we have to say echo in front of it because this is not a function that echoes anything out like this. We're echoing a value here, only it doesn't have a value yet. So let's save it and see what happens. Refresh and we don't see anything. It's not worked because this doesn't have a value. It only has an empty property, if you like. So then how do we actually set these properties? Well, the best way to do it is by using a constructor function. A constructor function is a special type of function inside classes that runs whenever we instantiate a class. So whenever we say new user, it's going to run that constructor function. And that constructor function can then set some initial values for our properties. So the way we do this is by first of all saying public and then function. And the special name is underscore underscore construct like so. That is the name it must be. So this is a function and this function can then access these different values right here and set them equal to something. Now, the way we do that is by saying dollar sign this and that refers to this object that we're creating. OK, so it refers to kind of like the class itself. When we're creating a new user, it creates a new user based on this class. And then this refers to that new user. So when we say this and then arrow email, it's referring to the email property. Much like we said user one name, it would be like saying this name. OK, and we're going to set that equal to an initial value. So I could set that equal to, I don't know, Mario at the net ninja dot code UK. So that's going to be the initial email value of any object created with this class. OK, to begin with, and I'm going to do the same for the name. So this and then arrow name is equal to Mario. OK, so now when we're creating a new user over here, then it's going to actually have the name Mario. So if we save this, it should echo out Mario now. Let me save it and refresh over here. And now we see Mario right there. So that worked. And we could change this to email if we wanted to, to get the email instead, refresh. And now we see the email right there. Perfect. Now, this is flawed because every time we create a new user, we're creating a user with the same initial values for the email and the name. Now, when we create new users, they're not all going to have the same email and the same name. That's just weird. So instead, what we'd like to do is be able to set those initial values ourselves. So let me now just comment this stuff out. And instead, what I'd like to do is create a new different user. So I'll call this user two and set this equal to new user. So we're creating a new user again. OK, and this time what I'd like to do is maybe pass in an email and a name so I can do that. We can take in those values here as parameters to this constructor function and also supply them here when we're creating a new user. So say, for example, I want to take in as the first parameter right here, a name value. And I'm expecting that when we create a new user. And the second value I'm going to expect will be an email. So we're creating those local variables here. Now we need to pass those values in. So the first argument, the first value is the name. And I'm going to set that equal to Yoshi. And the second one is going to be Yoshi at the net ninja dot UK. OK, so we now have a name and an email that we're passing into this constructor when we're creating a new user. Now we can access those values inside this constructor. So what I'm going to do is copy this and paste it down below. Then I'll comment this stuff out. And then what I'll do is instead of hard coding the email to be this, I'm going to set it equal to the email that we receive into this function. And likewise for this, I'll set it equal to the name that we receive. OK. Now, if I now try to echo user two and I want the name and also I'm going to do echo user two and the email and we don't want that gap right there. That was a mistake. 
and if we save this now and preview it then we should see both of those values so we see Yoshi first of all that's the name that we print out or echo out and then we get Yoshi at the net ninja cool so that works we're setting those values initially when we create this object and that's awesome because every time we create a new user now we can pass in our own values for that user now we can also access these values that have been set now inside the function so instead of echoing this out we could echo something like instead echo and then we want to output the name so we'll say this and then arrow name so it's accessing the name of this person of this user and then we'll concatenate that with a little string that says logged in so now if I try to log in let me comment those out I'm gonna say user 2 and then login like so now it's gonna print hopefully out Yoshi logged in so if I save this and refresh over here we can see Yoshi logged in awesome so there we go that's our very first simple class with a couple of different properties and a constructor function and also our own function as well now I did say before that typically when we set our properties over here we don't want them to be public we want them to be private so that they can't just be updated willy-nilly on the fly anywhere and we'll talk about that in the next video